Over the next few weeks, the store at the end of the world is going out and about to bring you the big gadgets. So big in fact, we couldn't even squeeze them into the expansive confines of our top secret basement location. So for the extra glimpse of the future, you're certainly tuned to the right show. First up, a machine that makes this and this look pathetic. I'm a sort of combination of an editor and what's called a digital compositor, which is somebody who puts a variety of things into a shot that probably weren't there in the first place. I have a dual role. Uh, my title is creative director. Uh, I'm also a flame operator. The Henry Desk works very similarly to an old film editing system and it's designed to be a real user-friendly interface. Um, hence these little film reels and film bars. You can scroll up and down your pictures like this. Um, in terms of television post-production or, you know, when you're talking about film, where anything's possible. Well, it's one of the things that Flame can do that Henry cannot do, which is to make reflections in things and treat them as if they're a 3D object, which is I'm quite jealous about. The concept of this, this job is that we have this, it's in two sections. There's a negative section and a positive section. Uh, the negative section is all technology, quite apocalyptic visions of a of, of future. And then we move into the, the positive section, uh, uh, where everybody's happy, floating around in bubbles. In this central reel here, I have shots in their original form. So you can see that this is a shot with a white background. There's not a great deal happening in it. When we get into the shot that's been composited, it's quite moody, it's stormy. There's a sky in the background and it feels much more like it's real, as if something is there. Uh, we painted his neck green. That means we can get rid of all this green, uh, cut around the neck and leave the head only, which is the, the area that we want to keep. The director has gone out and shot a whole lot of sky. Very nice sky it is too. But this sky is quite nice like this. The original sky actually looked more like that. And it's not really in keeping with the way we want the shot to look. So we've introduced an element of texture and colour into it. If I flick between the two here, you can see how the horizon is softened, how the clouds look more convincing. Once you've set up your, all your levels, you can actually scroll through and work out, you know, is it doing the right thing, is it going to the right spot, uh, is it travelling fast enough uh, based on what the anim animation is doing. You can have a look at that as a wireframe animation, just to illustrate the technology going in t in terms of layers, all of these black lines here <coughs> denote a separate layer for whatever this, the, these ones are probably the back dirt. The technology that's available now compared to what was available just three or four years ago um, has made the creative process um, an awful lot easier than it used to be. It frees your mind up to concentrate on the way that a shot looks. Um, it's a lot more exciting. Um, it's a lot more scary because you have to work a lot faster. You used to be able to kind of lie back a bit and think, oh, that's going to process, I'll go off for two hours and go to lunch. Uh, so what we've got going on in this sequence is uh, we start off with a girl, the bubble starts to spin quite wildly. Uh, we go through into a, a television interference like morph. Uh, we've added an awful lot of motion blur to uh, try and give the, uh, this morph a dimension. So it looks like it's spinning in 3D, not just a 2D manipulation, which is effectively what it is. Um, one of the things yet to go on this section is on this key transition sequence where we've got the liquid nitrogen, it's all we're also going to fire. I mean, they, they, they shot a lot of material of this, this um, black ball and they dropped four gallons of water on it and, and shot it at high speed so it's very slow, uh, which we're going to key into that to help, again, help the transition. Um, there's a tiny section here. We, we did shoot a, a lot of monitor interference for the negative section, which looks uh, like this. And that was keyed onto the bubble as a reflection um, on an eight frame cut, which is basically a quarter of a second. Um, if we have a look through this section here, we cut from the, the big guy to a close up, you see the monitor at the top there reflected in it, and it dances about on his face. Um, very subtle, very mixed back, very small, and if you play it in real time, this cut, you don't even see it, it's there and it's gone. And also things are really changing on the home market. Um, anybody who works with Apple Macintoshes or Power Macintoshes will know how programs like Director and Premiere, um, although they're still low resolution boxes, are still extremely powerful. 
Um, there is a program called After Effects which allows you to work in as many layers as you like and do very similar things to Flame. It might take you 10 years to get there, but you can do it. It's quite exciting because it's putting filmmaking and effects making into the hands of anybody who wants to use it. It's, it's demystifying it. It's made it a far more exciting process. If you're a photographer and you think, God, I'd love to make something moving. If you have a Macintosh and a little bit of time to learn the software, already you can do something great. You know, who knows what you can do in five years' time. Uh, if, if you were ever to see uh, a disembodied head floating around in a bubble, I hope it would look like this. Is this the face of the future? There is a better face. Trusted in 150 countries, investing one and a half million pounds every day, developing products to give you a more enjoyable future.